let's go back to the article real quick. I'll tell you what I mean by Catholic. Um, so basically they say, you know, his yard site's coming up. That means the, the anniversary of his death. And so all these people are flocking uh, to, to... To Queens. To Queens, yeah. As <laughs> to a holy place. <laughs> to the pilgrimage of Queens uh, to visit the, the, the rabbi's uh, uh, resting place. Now, why? Would, you might ask, why would they do such a thing? Well, because people want to go to his grave and pray. Now, why would you want to go to a graveside and... And pray, and now I'm going to say that this is not just uh, this is not just specific to, to Hasidic Judaism. I hear all the time, you know, like oh, you know, I'll hear Christians say things like, "Your father is watching now," or you know, you know, your father can see you, and I'm sure he's proud. But so you telling me my loved ones are now omniscient and can see all things? No, of course not. The I, I mean, this comes. They're eating popcorn, watching yeah. what's going on. Yeah, exactly. good job, Caleb. Right yeah, exactly. On. Job. All of your Can you secrets. Are... Yeah, I, I'm rooting for him. <laughs> exactly. It's like it's like a, a I don't know. Anyway, so uh, this is what they say: visiting the re- resting place of a tzaddik, a righteous person, is an ancient Jewish custom, as is Jewish magic. Anyway, um, several reasons are given for the custom. Okay. Here we go. They don't quote the Bible. Though. No, 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 never would they quote the Bible. <laughs> However, the other one try, uh, it touches on the Bible and how it's a sin to talk to the dead. Anyway, okay, so they say, number one, at any gravesite, you become more aware of your limited time on earth. Your heart is more open to prayer to God, and so your prayers are accepted on high. Okay, that's definitely not true. You're, just because you're aware that your time is limited on earth does not mean that God hears you more or less. And nor does going to a grave site. Exactly. What does that have to do with? Anyway, uh, the number two, the burial. If place, that was true, if that was true, why did why was corpse defilement the, the <laughs> biggest threat to the holy presence of God in the tabernacle? No doubt, according to the Torah, you're not allowed to go. You're not allowed to go. You're not allowed to do that. Okay. Um, number two, the burial place of the tzaddik, the holy one, the holy person, is a is a holy place. Just like the Western Wall in Jerusalem. It's like a portal to heaven. Okay, so if we don't, it, like, first of all, as believers, if you don't see this as utter heresy. Queens, like, New York. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you, know, don't, you don't have to go to Israel now. That's right. You got, a, you got a direct line right there in Queens. So anyway, if you're a believer and, and you hear this stuff and, and uh, you don't have alarm bells just going off all over the place, uh, then you need to check your theology. Something is desperately wrong. Okay, let's but keep there going. Was, we had talked about those who were the grave soakers or whatever right. in, in some of the Christian circles. Okay, hang on. Let's keep going. A Zadik's presence can be felt at his gravesite, just as it was felt during his lifetime. This itself can inspire you and carry you to an entirely different state. And number four, at the resting place, it is easier to connect to the Zadik's soul above and to request his blessings his blessings, just as you would before his passing. Okay, so now now hang on. I know what everyone's going to say. Well, this is clearly idolatry. However, Chabad.com, the same people who basically wrote that article, they've given explanation on how this can be allowed. Okay? Let's move over to a Chabad.org uh, uh, article, and this is what they say. Okay, we see the Jewish people asked... Oh, wait, hang on, let me go up a little bit. Yes, Jewish custom can be perplexing. Judaism is all about having a direct connection to God. An intermediary is a form of idolatry. Okay, yet for as long as there are records, Jews have been in the habit of asking righteous men and women to have a chat with God on their behalf. So in other words, it's idolatry, but since there's a good tradition, we'll let it go. Okay. So then down a little ways, they say, uh, so, uh, and any Jew who knows that another Jew is is ill should pray for him, but you need to go to that wise man as well. Okay. And they, they try to, they try to give you something from the Talmud. Anyway, the same with visiting graves on the one hand, as you pointed out, the Torah tells us not to, to beseech the dead. Okay. So they, this is the men, the one mention of the Torah that they give. Yeah, we're not allowed to beseech the dead, okay? It's listed along with all the other abominations practiced by people that lived in Canaan before we came there. And yet, 
we have an ancient and popular custom to visit the graves of righteous people and pray there. So once again, yes, it's an abomination, but we got a, we got a tradition. So, you know, that must supersede. Okay, let's keep going. The Talmud also states that it is customary to visit cemetery on a first uh, on a fast day. Why? Uh, okay, so why is this not called beseeching the dead? And why doesn't asking the Zadik living or dead to intercede on our behalf constitute making an intermediary between ourselves and God? This very question was raised. Basically, what they say is, yeah, uh, we're not praying to we're not praying to the to the person. We're asking that person to go to God, and and, you know, basically give them a request. Basically, they talk in circles. That's basically all there is to it. So why does this remind me of Catholicism? All of this to say. Because when you talk about, uh, you know, your saints, praying to the saints, and what, what do the Catholics say? Oh, you don't pray to the saints. That's not what you do. Or, or when you say a Hail Mary, right? Oh, well, you're not actually praying to Mary. But she's much holier, and so what you do is you give your you give your your prayer, and then Mary takes that to God because she's closer to God than you are. Well, so is Mary omniscient? Is Mary omnipresent? Can d- does she hear everyone's prayer? So the problem with the, with this kind of of uh, thinking is that no matter which way you slice it, ultimately it comes down to idolatry. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.